Whenever you make a call on your phone, do you ever wonder what would happen if your carrier, such as AT&T, refused to connect your call with a friend who uses another network, such as Verizon? Most people don't, because virtually all wireless carriers interconnect with one another, an important feature of network goods, the focus of this lecture. Network goods come in many forms. First, there are networks that are connected physically or wirelessly, such as your smartphone, which connects to a local wireless tower, or your GPS device, which connects to a satellite. Second, there are networks that are connected virtually by the products people use, such as a computer software or a game console. For example, as more people buy the newest Xbox, the network of Xbox users increases. Finally, there are social networks, which are virtual networks that also contain some form of physical connection. For example, Facebook is connected virtually by its 1 billion plus users, but within this virtual network, you have connections with friends and businesses that you choose to like, creating a social network. What makes network goods so important to consumers and businesses? Network goods possess an important characteristic called a network effect, which occurs when a good or a service increases in value the more people who use it. If you're the only person in the world with an iPad, that might be neat, but you wouldn't be able to FaceTime with anyone, and no programmer would want to design apps just for one customer. With each additional iPad user, the value of the iPad increases to all users. The existence of network effects creates virtuous and vicious cycles for products. Remember Friendster? Most college students have never heard of it. Friendster was the most popular social media site in 2003 before MySpace caused Friendster to fall into a vicious cycle. MySpace experienced a virtuous cycle, gaining over 500 million users until Facebook came along. A virtuous cycle occurs when an increase in users increases the value of a product, which encourages more people to use it. A vicious cycle works the opposite way. When most of your friends canceled their MySpace accounts, you had no reason to keep yours a cycle that led to a sharp drop in users. Another reason why network goods are important is because the existence of network effects creates a network demand curve that initially slopes upward before sloping downward. Let's analyze a network demand curve in more detail. Suppose you open a new fitness gym. The capacity of the gym is fixed, as shown with a vertical short run supply curve and a demand for gym memberships will appear, creating an equilibrium price and quantity. Now suppose that you open another gym across town, doubling your network capacity. In a typical market, when you shift supply to the right, the price falls. However, for a network good, the demand curve will increase along with the increase in supply. Why? because a fitness center with two locations is much more attractive to its members than just one location. As the network expands, the demand continues to increase but at a diminishing rate. If we connect the equilibrium points from each supply and demand curve, we derive the network demand curve, which slopes upward due to the network effects and then downward due to diminishing returns. Who are the consumers represented on the upward sloping portion of the demand curve? These are consumers who want the newest products. As the buzz regarding a new product rises, these consumers would stand in line and pay full price. These are the product's core users. Eventually, network effects decrease as a product matures, which means that prices for many technology goods fall over time to attract more casual users. Think of your grandmother who purchased a tablet only after everyone else in the family already had one and after the price fell. She is clearly a casual user. How about you? Are you a core user or a casual user? What does the network demand curve mean for businesses? 
When a virtuous cycle occurs, a business's market share can rise very quickly along the network demand curve. When a vicious cycle occurs, market share can fall very quickly. Between 2012 and 2013, nearly 100 million people signed up for a Dropbox account, creating a virtuous cycle that was achieved with very little advertising. But just as Dropbox flourished, other services such as YouSendIt, now called Hightail, suffered and had to reinvent themselves to survive. This brings up an important point. Often, the quality of competing products does not differ much, but the power of network effects creates winners and losers. Very few people today use WordPerfect to create documents, even though it's comparable to Microsoft Word. The power of network effects allowed Microsoft to achieve its market leader status. However, Google Docs is starting to chip away at Microsoft's market share. Because of the speed at which a virtuous or a vicious cycle can occur for network goods, businesses use various strategies to increase and to protect their market share. Teaser strategies are incentives used to attract new customers to a network. For example, did you receive a discount on your smartphone in exchange for signing a two-year wireless plan? Did you receive a short-term discount when you signed up for cable or internet service? Did you receive a gift when you applied for your last credit card? These are examples of teaser strategies in which businesses spend a lot of money to acquire new customers, knowing that once a customer signs up, it's likely that customer will stay in the network for a long time. And just to be sure that customers stay in the network, businesses use lock-in strategies, which are incentives to keep customers from leaving a network. If you change wireless providers, you might need to change phones. If you change your internet service provider, you might lose your bundling discount on a television plan. Teaser and lock-in strategies are used by businesses to grow their networks and to keep the customers they have. The power of networks permeates through many of the choices we make today because advertising is no longer confined to television commercials, billboards, and magazines. A significant portion of advertising occurs online and through word of mouth and social media. In 2000, a big uproar occurred when a company called Napster made free music sharing between users easy. Music artists worried that music sharing would reduce sales and therefore oppose such technologies. Today, as most consumers buy and listen to music online and through streaming services, some artists have taken the opposite approach. In 2012, Justin Timberlake released most of his new songs on streaming sites, allowing fans to listen to his music for free. Was Justin just a nice guy wanting everyone to hear his music for free? Hardly. It was a strategy to maximize the network effects through word of mouth and social media. And it worked. When the 2020 Experience album was released in early 2013, it sold over a million paid downloads in the first week. Network goods are an important part of our economy today. The power of network effects can make products succeed or fail quickly. It also can make any video go viral to the benefit of its creator. So go ahead, download this video lecture free of charge. Share it with your friends. Post it on your Facebook or Twitter accounts. Be a part of the growing trend on the important role of networks in today's society. Thank you.